Welcome back to your favourite thing about Sunday. And it all begins here, around 57 laps of Bahrain. This is often one of the greatest races of the year. Well, the crowd here in Bahrain have seen Formula One for the first time. Judging by the noise, they like what they see. Fernando Alonso wins. Sir Lewis Hamilton, as he is now, wins the Bahrain Grand Prix. Sergio Perez, what a race! This is much, much quicker than the Jaguar. Oh, Weber off the gas. What was that all about? That's halfway down the straight. Here we go. We're up alongside and nowhere to go. Down into the turn nine and ten again. And uh, for some reason, Weber is very slow up there. This is where he gave him a little uh, pause, better. didn't he? This is better. He's closer. Now he's got in that uh, sweet. That is naughty. And Alonso says, you should not do that. And he's right to say that. But can he nail him up the inside? It's a right-hander coming up. Surely Weber has got the space he needs. And uh, just, I think Mark, I think he's just being a touch naughty there. This is great stuff here. Alonso, has he got through? I think he has. Mark Webber obviously made some sort of mistake into turn one and Alonso has finally got past him. There's the mistake. Webber outbreaks himself in turn one and oh, so nearly loses his nose. This is crucial now for the Renault boys. They've got to be like clockwork here. It'll be a shorter stop, remember, than Ferrari. Less fuel going in. Well, he was 1.3 behind when Michael pitted. So that's how, oh, that was a great stop. Michael was 8.7, he's 7.7. Seven and a half faster. Yeah, so he's going to get there. It's going to be very, very close. That traffic cost him nearly. Here comes Michael. And I think he's going to get it, isn't he? Michael's doing 200 miles an hour. That is going to be so close. And surely Michael's got the momentum. No, Alonso's done it. Alonso's done it. Oh, Michael's trying to get around the outside. And he's not going to let him through. Just enough on that pit stop. And Alonso takes the lead. How close do you need it? On the tightest of margins, our Grand Prix won and lost. And you just had a great illustration of that right there. This is what it looked like from Michael's point of view. And he's looking and thinking, what colour is that car? Oh, no, it's the Renault. I'll go around the outside of him. And Alonso just runs him, hangs him out to dry on the outside. Perfectly legal and correct to do that. You can take your own line. If Michael chooses to park his beautiful Ferrari there, then he's going to get nerfed to the outside. Alonso just looking in his mirror thinking, that'll do for me. And now it's Michael Schumacher eating the dirty air off the Renault. In a head-to-head, -head, I now believe that Alonso and Raikkonen can just shade Michael Schumacher. And I think we've seen that here this afternoon. They, they've got that extra little bit of speed now. And they and then, now they're in front of him, they've got the maturity and the confidence to, to cope with it too. Well, that's a big thing to say, and I think you may well be right. Out of the final corner comes Fernando Alonso. He wins the first round of the 2006 World Championship. Fernando Alonso beats Michael Schumacher in a straight fight here at Sakir. He is a back-to-back -back Bahrain winner. Bahrain's new layout, the chosen stage for the launch of Formula One's latest roller coaster ride. And we're away now in 2010. Four world champions. And we are underway, down towards that first corner. Lewis Hamilton makes a move, but it's Vettel from Massa, from Alonso. With a move up there by Michael Schumacher, who seems to have got ahead there. What's the problem there? Is it from Mark Webber? Mark Webber, there's all sorts of blue smoke coming out of the rear of his Contact car there. In the back, cars across the gravel, all going off at the back end of the field. Whether it's the Red Bull overfilled with oil or whether he's actually blown the right bank of that V8, we'll find out shortly. Here we are with Michael Schumacher, with Nico Rosberg just ahead there of a McLaren. Just see, it's Hamilton, Vettel, Alonso, Massa, Rosberg, and now Jensen Button jousting with Mark Webber as they make way through the infield section, coming up to turn eight and nine. Oh, Button was well out of shape as well as we cut away. He kept it together, but look how much gap he lost to the Red Bull. Uh, oh damage front wing on Chandok's car, he's been off obviously. It's a long lap of course, isn't it? It is a long lap. Oh! There's Nico Hulkenberg going right off and he almost collects another car there. Now what happened there? Well he, he got a lot of oversteer that he turned into and then uh, sort of did a bit of a tank slapper on him and, and swung the other way and he, he couldn't catch it. 
Now they're on this back straight as the mechanics sit there anxiously. It's a much shorter straight, of course. Does Alonso really want to be in all that heat? But look, he's just easily pulling him in. And uh, Massa then just watching this all unfold. So the Red Bull's handling beautifully. It's just getting, uh, remember, last year they had a lot of reliability issues, didn't they, with the Renault engine. I think he'll be a sitting target on the pit straight. And then Alonso will have the clear air that he craves to cool that Ferrari down. Yeah, it's, I think it's got an exhaust broken or something like that. He's going to drive clean past him. Alonso's through and past Vettel. And how much longer will it take for Massa to move through as well? They enjoyed that in the Ferrari garage. So Alonso didn't start on the front row, but he may be on the top stop of that podium. Massa's closing as well. Could well be a Ferrari 1-2. There goes Massa on the inside of Vettel, and he's absolutely powerless. The man who started from pole, down towards the final corners. It's his first race for Ferrari, and he's a winner in Bahrain. Fernando Alonso wins for the first time in 2010, and the team who seemed to get it all wrong last year start as a prancing horse should in the new year. Here comes Nico Rosberg in the turn one for the lead this. Rosberg against Hamilton. Hamilton fights back. Rosberg has to concede the lead within a matter of metres. But Hamilton, was he caught unaware? Could he see Rosberg coming? He didn't manage to fend him off for the first time, but got the play straight back again. Hamilton, Rosberg part two, and he's going to try out the inside again. Rosberg, because he's got DRS, and this time Lewis Hamilton locks up as well as Nico Rosberg. Now, does that give Rosberg the chance to keep hold of the lead? Looks to me like it does as they move up the hill now. Hamilton just couldn't get the traction to fight right back, but he's now going to get the slipstream. And towards turn four we go, towards the outside of the track. Hamilton is pushed. Rosberg makes his move around that right-hander. Hamilton now trying to fight back down the hill. This is where Rosberg went off on the first lap. This is where Hamilton... Hamilton on lap 19 regains the lead back again. Nico Rosberg into the first turn we go. Is this the lead now for Rosberg? Hamilton manages to stay ahead. There's no team orders but going Ros on to Mercedes. Rosberg will be way, way quicker out of turn two. He could get on the throttle, but Hamilton's covered the inside line. And those stickier tyres for Rosberg giving him better traction too. Will, will he leave him any space? Absolutely He's gone off the not. track. He's gone completely off the track, Nico Rosberg, but he's certainly not given up yet. He now has to as Hamilton slots back into the lead again. Wow. Five laps to go. Hamilton, our race leader. Rosberg in second, gaining all the time. Little bit too far back, but he's going to go for it down the he inside. It, has he outbraked himself? Yes, he has. Lewis Hamilton comes back into the lead once more. And Mercedes are going to make it back to back one twos. It's Lewis Hamilton who once again wins the Grand Prix. Hamilton triumphs in Bahrain from his teammate Nico Rosberg. And it is smiles all round of both celebration and relief in equal measure. Yeah, it was exciting. Nico <laughs> drove fantastically well through, throughout the race and um, very fair. And it was very, very hard to keep him behind. I was on the, on the knife edge the whole time, but it was... Great fun and, of course, a real relief when I got across the line. Hulkenberg on Esteban Ocon into the final corner as well. Hulkenberg swoops around the outside of Esteban Ocon. Nice move there from the German driver in the Renault. But now Ocon is wheel to wheel and we'll see Mercedes power in the Force India against Renault power as well. And we'll see Renault power Alonso against Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Magnussen ahead of Harley. Hamilton down the inside on Nico Hulkenberg. Ocon might lose out to Fernando Alonso. Hamilton makes up places ahead of Hulkenberg, ahead of Alonso. And then comes the Force India of Esteban Ocon. This move has not finished yet though. Alonso is having a go and Nico Hulkenberg, brilliant moving, brilliant overtaking on the first few laps. Look at this for a triple overtake. <laughs> this is fantastic. The, the McLaren behind Hamilton, he can just about see the track through the sparks and down the inside he goes. And I tell you who did well there, Hulkenberg, because he was outside the field of vision of Hulkenberg's mirrors. It would have been very easy for the Renault to just slam across the front of the Mercedes, especially when you've got somebody coming from more than uh, from two cars behind you. It's lights out and away we go. Russell does get away well, as does Max Verstappen. And Valtteri Bottas has got his teammate right alongside him already. Sergio Perez is trying to challenge as George Russell goes into the first turn. And George Russell takes the lead of the Sakir Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas is second and gets all out of shape coming out of turn two. That's going to give Perez and Verstappen all the impact.
impetus as they need. As it's three cars going wheel to wheel, there's a spin right at the back. Could be Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo. Look up there as Perez is caught by Charles Leclerc. And there's three cars gone off at turn four. And we've already got high drama here on the opening lap. And it's Max Verstappen, who was the third of those cars. He is out of the race on the first lap. Science looks to have got a very nice safety car restart and he's putting Bottas under all sorts of pressure going into turn one. It's side by side, McLaren and Mercedes inside line goes to Science and Carlos Science takes second place but have to go off the track in doing so. That allows Valtteri Bottas to reclaim that second place. George Russell already flying out in front. Ricardo is currently fourth from Kvyat and then comes Lance Stroll, Pierre Gasly, Esteban Ocon, Sebastian Vettel and Lando Norris. What a duel that was, Science and Bottas. Alex Albon is right on the back now of Lando Norris and he might be sizing up a move to go round the outside and then pinch the inside line at turn five. Norris tries to cover it off. Alex Albon, that is what he can do in Formula One. Swoops past Lando Norris and Sergio Perez then gets Norris as well using all his years of experience to pick up the scraps after Norris had been overtaken by the Red Bull. Oh, here comes Sergio Perez again. He got past Lando Norris on the last lap. Fancies Alex Albon on this particular lap. You wouldn't think there's much space there, but Perez manages to squeeze a Formula One car through it. Well done, Alex Albon, for leaving just enough room, making it difficult, but Perez is past. The double stacking at Mercedes. The front right tyre uh, was slow for George Russell. And for Valtteri Bottas, even more confusion uh, for a crew that are normally uh, very, no, they're not very happy adept. with the left front. They're not happy with it with his left front. Okay, George, we're going to need to box box. We have a mixed tyre set on the car. Oh, oh no! And that's that's led to the confusion in double stacking. They've brought out two sets of tyres. They've got a mixed set on. This is going to cost George Russell a penalty. It happened to Valtteri Bottas in uh, Spa once. Yeah, as long as you come in and sort it out within three laps, I believe it's okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so, but basically, what's happened is they've got they've got some of Bottas's tyres on, or indeed all of Bottas's tyres on. Valtteri Bottas goes a little bit wider through turn four. Russell's now going to have a go at him on this twisty section of the track, the middle section. He's got the inside line at turn seven and he goes past his teammate. George Russell overtakes Valtteri Bottas. That was committed, it was brave, it was brilliant. Mercedes power against Mercedes power. He's trying to break the toe line stroll. George Russell's made up his mind to go down the inside. Late on the brakes into turn one. Enough room for Russell to squeeze past and back up into the top three once again. George Russell has closed up that gap uh, to Esteban Ocon all the while. Sergio Perez having it his own way out in front. He's got the inside line. George Russell into turn four. That was an easier move on Esteban Ocon. Valtteri Bottas is under pressure from Carlos Sainz. Those tyres that are a little bit too old for Valtteri Bottas's liking have cost him again as Carlos Sainz moves up into fifth place. Sainz who lost places when he pitted at the end of the virtual safety car and the track went green. Sainz lost places. He's making the place back up again now. And Daniel Ricciardo too, because Ricciardo goes past Bottas into the last corner, up into six. And now Alex Albon fancies having a go at Valtteri Bottas. And those tyres are just falling away from it. Bottas has got DRS, but he can't defend, or can he? Because there's a drag race down the straight, and the Mercedes power unit is really helping, but under braking, Albon goes through. The man who was in last place at the end of lap one comes home to win the Sakir Grand Prix. Sergio Perez, wow, what a race for him and for racing points. Charles Leclerc instantly going to the middle of the track and back out to the outside. Uh, fastest lap for Max Verstappen. He's got DRS, he's got a great run. And here comes Max Verstappen to take the lead in Bahrain. He's got in front of the Ferrari. Can he hold on? Not run too wide. Beautifully done by Max Verstappen. Leclerc now in second position, but he's still on the attack. Now he has DRS. He'll go on the attack. Down into turn four. He'll go for the outside. Oh, wow. Fantastic move if he doesn't go too wide. On exit. That was stunning. 
this is what Formula One were hoping with the new design of cars that you would get racing as close as this, and we've got it again. And Verstappen's down the inside of Charles Leclerc once again, holds it beautifully onto the apex. Charles Leclerc now will have the same situation, but can he get the braking done as late as he did last time? He's going to go to the inside, and Verstappen's on the outside. The DRS works, and Charles Leclerc goes in, but Verstappen's trying to go with him on the outside, and Leclerc's got it. Look again, Verstappen's close. He goes for a very late lunge, surely. He's not going to be able to hold on to that. Leclerc, yes, can just come straight back at him. And they know this is wonderful, but that just shows you this is real racing. And this is something that sets up a wonderful season in potential. He's looking at Verstappen in the mirrors. He's waiting. There goes Max. If you're not going to turn in, I will. But this time he's just a little bit later on the brakes. He's trying to turn in. And that could be costly. A big front right lockup. There's likely to be a flat spot on his tyre. And that could be a crucial moment in this lead battle. Yeah, I was trying to be as clever as, as possible uh, using the DRS uh, as much as possible. So I was trying to break early in turn one just to be uh, behind him at the DRS detection and, and twice it worked out. So I, uh, I took back my first position and uh, yeah, just incredibly happy that we made it uh, work. I think there is a very ambitious project, uh, what, what I found. Very talented people, uh, people want to succeed, want to win in, in the near future. Turn 14 and 15 has been Alonso territory all weekend long. He takes that wide line in there. He makes a bit of a correction as he's desperately trying to wring the most from the Aston Martin. Given the opportunity he's got, where does Alonso go? Alonso is six tenths of a second away in fifth, ahead of the Mercedes. I think if you'd offered him that at the start of pre-season testing, he'd have definitely taken it. And Formula One in 2023 is go! On board with Stroll and he's fighting. The uh, Mercedes oh. Russell, and that's a whack. That's a whack on the right rear of Fernando. Teammates crashing in four corners of the season is not what you want to see. Big opportunity now for Fernando Alonso, and George Russell knows it. He goes defensive to turn number one, parks it up, and Alonso will get another dose of DRS. He takes a different line, soaring left, soaring right. They're climbing the hill now, and Alonso knows he's got to get the move done. Russell's run out of tyres. Aston Martin versus Mercedes, and through goes Fernando Alonso to take fifth place. Oh, he gives him room, and it's going to be tight as they go through there side by side. Who blinks first? And it's Alonso who manages to keep hold of the position he won a couple of corners ago. This is going to be really tight. He's got DRS again. Hamilton's got to cover the inside, and he doesn't enough. Oh, to the inside goes Fernando Alonso. That famous message all those years ago. All the time you have to leave a that space. Contact. And that was so close on the inside. Hamilton did leave a space. Alonso slithered to the inside, and it was very slow on the apex. And it's Alonso behind Hamilton. What a strange moment at turn four. Again, that wide, wide, wide line. Just soaring the Mercedes in half. Better traction, millimetres between the pair of them as they go side by side. He's not going to try around the outside, oh. but he is going to try the inside of turn 10. Brilliant. What Absolutely. a superb move from Fernando Alonso. Absolutely brilliant. And I think that was just absolute top shell from Fernando Alonso. Yes, let's go. Fernando Alonso's maximum, he knew at the start of the day, was going to be a place on the podium. When his teammate hit him at this corner, he would have thought that it was falling away from him. But what sort of traction has he got now? Oh, oh he's nearly into the back of his rival as they go down the hill. Is he going to do the same as he did to Hamilton? Is he going to go to the outside, to the inside? Dare he try it again? Oh, and Sainz was wise to it, but the lockup is going to mean that they're basically parked up as they apply the power now. And Alonso gets a little bit of slipstream, and he's making the move. Sainz is nearly driving him off the road, but Fernando Alonso is onto the podium once again in Formula One. What a debut he is having. Yes, bye bye. Please welcome back to the Formula One podium for the 99th time, Fernando Alonso, who weaves across the line and celebrates a dream debut with Aston Martin. Alonso heading back to the rostrum, heading back to the podium, having provided us with some phenomenal overtakes along the way. Yes, yes.
Yes, mate, well done, that's P3. Yes! What you have done, guys? What you have done? I'm so proud of you. The driver of the day, celebrating like he's won the race. So many career moves didn't work out. And for the 99th time in Formula One, Fernando Alonso is heading to the podium. We didn't expect to be that competitive. I think we didn't expect to be in the podium, to be honest, in 2023. We thought just to start the project, try to be in the midfield, and then eventually in 2024, you know, get closer to the top three teams. And we found out that uh, we had the second best car in, in Bahrain, just behind Red Bull. So this is just a, an amazing surprise. Uh, very proud of the team. Uh, and hopefully from, from now on, we can build something uh, more aggressive in terms of expectations and, uh, and yeah, keep on going.